16 record last year out of the Mountain West Conference where they finished with an 8-10 record. The Yummy Morris, Mercedes Staple, Sarah Barcelo, Alex Crane, and Kim Villalobos. And Villalobos got that first early foul. Cameron Brink for three. That's a good way to start off the year. How about that? First possession, Cameron, third team All-American last year. And she shot at a 35% clip a year ago. So hard to be stopped. She can score on all three levels of the floor, and you see her there with the perimeter defense as well, forces the travel. Yeah, he was talking about that season preview. Haley Jones who had the ball. She was on a couple of All-American teams, first team All-American teams the preseason, as was Cameron. This is the only team in the country that returns two All-American members as Kiki Ariathan with the rip move to the lane. Well, this is Kiki's first ever start. She was really impressive last year, about four and a half points in only six and a half minutes a game. The thing I loved about it most is when she was in, you could see the aggression that she had, right? No matter what, not afraid to go to the basket. And I think if you're Tara Vanderveer, that's exactly what you want to see more out of her this year too as she continues to grow and be more comfortable with the collegiate game. Here's Brink at the left elbow, faces up. Haley Jones for three, no good. Rebound to Erie Offen, and turns it over. She tried to pass it out. Staples with it for San Diego State. It's an Aztecs team. They have a lot of experience, maybe not necessarily on campus though of San Diego State. A lot of transfers on this Aztecs team, but a lot of those players from programs, big time programs, They've had success at the NCAA tournament level as that three is no good. Rebound for Cameron Brink. They got a lot of good grad transfers on this team. What a pass, Haley Jones to Cameron Brink for two. All-American to All-American. And there is a timeout from Stacy Terry Hudson. I mean, what a tremendous pass to cutter Cameron Brink. This game has started as well as possible for Stanford. Already up, seven zip. Stanford by a touchdown. You loved it, the sound of that. Of course, Stanford led by Tara Vanderveer going into her 44th season. 1,005 wins, and that's just only at the helm of Stanford. It's 1,000. Just didn't hit for the Cardinal. Um, I asked Coach Jandria before the year, what, what did you think of last year? Was it a success? She goes, are you kidding me? We went to the Final Four. How was it not a success? And then she uh, kind of gave me a, a, a bit of a look. But... Uh, <laughs> I think this is a Final Four expectations team, and uh, we'll see how it looks tonight. San Diego State's a quality opponent. This is a nice first test. And of course, if you know Tara Vanderveer, if Tim says that look, you know exactly what that look is and what it looks like. She has given me that look a few times. <laughs> I've I, gotten it, it before, too. And when you ever ask her a question, you, she gives you that look. You got you think in your head, uh-oh. <laughs> Was it a good question or not? There's a tip out of bounds by Haley Jones. They were looking for... Abby Prohaska, the senior from Ohio. 15 seconds on the shot clock. A couple other subs in as well now for the Aztecs as the runner off no good from Sophia Ramos. And here comes Stanford with Haley Jones. Haley behind the back, stops on a dime, pull up, no. Here off in the rebound. Or Stanford as we've seen the last couple of years, a lot of tall bodies on this roster. Meanwhile, on the other side, San Diego State really just one person over 6-1. Brink to the lane. No, but it's fouled. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point because it, it, this is going to be one of the longest teams in the country. And right now, they got Haley 6-1, who's the point. Hannah kind of at three position at six feet. Agnes Amanopu, I think 5-11, but she's really got long arms. Kiki, a, a center. Cameron Brinks listed at 6'4". I think she might be 6'5 or 6'6". Yeah, six, she six. looks a little taller than me this year. Uh, Lauren Betts is listed at 6'7". I was watching her and, and Cameron stand next to each other. They're about the same height. But I think two things, no doubt, that Stanford will do very well this year. They will defend very well, and they will rebound very well. Really been the calling card for the card the last couple of years. Last free throw was off from Cameron Brink. It's 8 nothing now the score. Pump fake, drive into the lane, the dish off. That was Peppa trying to go for Morris, but it goes out of bounds. Active hands, a lot of deflections. The length of Stanford is going to cause opponents a lot of trouble. Well, you also see the, the height and size of Stanford inside. That, that makes 
people second guess if they want to get that shot up when they go inside the lane. Erie Offen to the left. Nice footwork up with the right hand. Incredible footwork. Four now for Kiki here in the first. You see Agnes Imanopu with that ball pressure. Cameron Ooh. Brink swats that one out of here. You'll see that a good bit. Uh, she set the, the Stanford record for blocks as a freshman, and then she set the Stanford record for blocks as a sophomore. I remember there were a couple of people around the country in the NCAA tournament last year. They, they were so intrigued to see some of those big post matchups when Stanford had some of those big matchups inside against Texas and, and Maryland of who was really going to dominate that. Well, the answer every time was Cameron Brink. As Hannah jump outside for three, no good, and it goes off Emanopu. And it'll go to the Aztecs. Yeah, those are big matchups up in Spokane, and especially the one against Maryland. And it seemed like Cameron took those personally, and she plays with an incredible amount of fire. Something tells me she might have watched the last dance if she's taking those personally. <laughs> Out of the corner with the Ramos, and she is fouled by Haley Jones. That'll be her first. Ramos, a senior out of San Antonio. Started all 31 games last year for the Aztecs. And you see the first sub coming in for Stanford is going to be the freshman, Talana Lapolo. I'm excited to see her a lot this year, Tim. I got a chance to see her in the exhibition last week against Vanguard. And you talk about someone that's able to push that pace and really get things going in transition. It's really going to be exciting to see her come off the bench and spell Haley at times and, and just continue that aggressive attack for Stanford. Cameron Brink on the defense to get the steal. And how about this? Your 6'5 post player most of the time going behind the back in transition. Yeah, poor Pepe took the ball off the noggin and looked off the nose. That's not fun. Yeah, they're going to check on her too to make sure. Didn't have any type of concussion, but yeah, Lopolo's really interesting. You know, Stanford hasn't had really a pure point guard since Marta Sneezek, who Tara told me would be in the house tonight. I haven't seen Marta uh -huh. yet, but uh, Keanu Williams did an excellent job as a point guard, but she was really kind of like a scoring guard. One of those tweeners. Yeah. So Lopolo is a point guard, and uh, she is tough as nails. A nearby product. Went to... Karen Dillette High School and then over in Alameda, born in Hayward. Yeah, went to Karen Dillette, which is a really good high school for Stanford women's basketball. That's where Jana Pell went. She's really competitive. And she's one of those players that, that might not have been like a top 20 recruit, but is going to have a giant impact. Inside out game for the Aztecs, but they stepped on the sideline that was Ramos and it'll be another turnover ball to the Cardinal so that's one thing that's going to make Tara Vanderveer happy you limit your turnovers and force a lot of turnovers for the other team so far three turnovers for the Aztecs just one for Stanford they had eight in the exhibition against Vanguard which was a 102 to 25 win for Stanford Ashton Prechtel now in the game Going back door was Hannah Jump. Good defense deflected away by Via Lobos. Emma Nopu straight away three is no good. Off the back iron, and it was tipped out by Emma Nopu. But you see that hustle and energy, though, that she's going to bring every time she's on the floor. How about a shout out for Emma? This is, uh, or Agnes Emma Nopu. This is her first start at Stanford. And you're talking to the, the coaches and the staff, and one of the first questions in the offseason who are the players that are impressed you offseason workouts? And immediately, who's the two starters that are new? Kiki and Agnes Simonopu. That's one thing, when I, again, that's what Tara mentioned as well last week. Floater over Prechtel, no good, and there's Cameron Brink. She's talked about how, it, and overall too, just how hungry this team has been in their offseason workouts. Which, uh, of course, at the end of the day, always impressive to see a group that's had so much success, they come back wanting even more. But there is a steal. Coming the other way with it, Ramos. Emma Nopu there, and she will get the foul. 
So Sophia Ramos will go to the line for the Aztecs. Good play though by Agnes, preventing an easy two points. And you very rarely see someone on a fast break and the person behind him, you see Agnes getting position and getting her way. Here's another interesting freshman, yes. India Navarre. There she is, 5'10", from North Carolina. Yeah. Apex, North Carolina, and of course, if you know your basketball, that is a hotbed for hoops. As a McDonald's and Jordan Brand Classic All-American. Of course, you can say that for a good bit of the Cardinal on this roster. And number 20 recruits in the country. Talk about the depth of the Stanford team. The number one recruit in the country sitting on the bench still. We'll see lots of Lauren Betts this year, but this is just how deep this Cardinal team is. Well, I, and think about how fun that is. Usually in, in years past, and, and also just the growth of the women's game, in years past, for the most part, there was only one school that would come to people's mind when you talk about multiple number one overall recruits on a team. And, of course, that's up in stores with UConn and Gino Ariema's program. Well, now Stanford has it as well, and you look around, there are a lot of other programs. If they don't have multiple number ones, they have a lot of number ones, number twos, you name it. 10-3 right now in favor of the Cardinal. Haley Jones with it. Navarre now off the handoff. Lost it, trying to get to Brink. Now into Haley Jones, turns and Ooh. hits. That's so pretty. She makes it look so easy. And she decided she was going to shoot with her back to the bucket. And that's just repetition. Yeah, I think she understood. She knew who was on her, that she had that advantage to turn around and shoot it. And Cameron Brink knew she had the defensive advantage and sends that one into the front row. Second block already for Cam. Great volleyball player in high school. That, that was a volleyball swat. Long two is a little long. And there's Navarre coming in to seal it away. She's going to take it up with the right hand, swat it off the backboard, but she keeps it. Hannah jump now, and Stanford will set it up. And we'll have a foul up front to the chagrin of Sofia Ramos. Fourteen foul, Stanford and bonus, final three of this first quarter. And Tim, you're, you're seeing it a little bit already, but I think one thing that is different from the Stanford team last year, as good as it was, you see there's so many more players, I believe, and a lot of them really young, as there's a beautiful pass and finish by Brink. They have a lot of people on the team that can take you off the dribble and make something happen. Yeah, I'm really interested by any Navar. She is like your classic wing, has a lot of burst, just moves a little bit quicker than everybody else on the floor. She's somebody who can take you off the bounce. Good defense. Haley Jones might have gotten a piece of it. Now Lapolo flying the other way with her left hand. I mean, how about this this lineup now for Stanford? You get basically two point guards on the floor with Haley Jones and Lapolo. Skip pass to jump. It really will be interesting to see as the year goes on exactly how and what combinations that Tara Vanderveer wants to use for this team. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. I, I, I think uh, I saw Cameron Brink right there. Had a great offseason. Eight points in eight minutes for her. But I think uh, Hannah Jump will play a lot. Yes. And that's why. Hannah for three. Thirty-nine percent a season ago was the leader in the Pac-12 in terms of threes made, 20th in the nation. And you see those active hands from Stanford, another deflection. Yeah, before the year, I, I was talking to Hannah. She didn't shy away from it. She said, I want to lead the Pac-12 in threes made and three-point percentage. Well, I mean, what, what's that one phrase that they say in the dating world, Tim? I know you're obviously not too much experience in the dating world anymore, but what is it, shoot or shoot? Shoot or shoot. Well, she's a shooter and she shoots. That's exactly what she does. There's a mid-range jumper, no good. Stanford coming the other way. Navarre, pull up, three, why not? Welcome to College Hoops, India Navarre for her first three points. This is something else that's going to be a little thing that we saw against Vanguard is picking up the ball handler's full court. The amount of players Stanford's going to use in the athleticism that they have, they're going to be putting pressure in the backcourt on the ball. And, yeah, thinking about it, for the most part last year, that was just the responsibility of Anna Wilson 
but Agnes Emanoku, Emanopu will do it. Solana Lapolo will do it. India Navar can do it. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you can't tell, basically what we're telling you is this team is so versatile in so many different ways. And, well, here's another way we can talk about versatility. The number one recruit a season ago, Lauren Betts checking in for her first official action. And go to her right away. Why not? Now Haley with it. She's going to try to get her own offense and is foul. That one's going to be charged to Kim Villalobos. It's her second. second Take a look there. Just make sure she wasn't cut. Yeah. yeah. But again, going back to Lauren Betts, there was one stat I saw that was really interesting. It's always impressive if you're a one-time Gatorade Player of the Year. She did it twice. Now, in the state of Colorado and their history of women's basketball, there have been four players that have ever won it multiple times. Do you know who the last player to do it was? And I'll give you a hint. She played in the Pac-12. I'm thinking. It's always, that's not usually a good thing when I start thinking. <laughs> So played at UCLA, uh, now with the New York Liberty, won Rookie of the Year. Uh, Mik uh, Michaela Onyewede. There you go. She won it three times. She was an unbelievable. Yes, She's one she of the was. best players I've seen over the last few years. Turnaround in the lane a little too strong from Staples. And Navarre comes with it. Shot clock is dead. Inside to Betts. Aztec bench wanted the travel. They don't get it. Dimitri will shoot and hit it. Who needs a shot pocket when as soon as you can catch it, it doesn't matter. It's going up. Well, we saw Brooke Dimitri at points last year, and she is like a 6'3 wing shooter. She is really talented. In the lane, and it will be a foul. Good drive to the left by Alex Crane. And so she'll go to the line to shoot two as that foul was on Indian Navarre. One for 13 early on for San Diego State. They haven't scored for three minutes, 50 seconds. I, I don't know if Stanford will be not the number one defensive team by defensive rating in the country, but I'll tell you this much, and it's just game one, but they are going to be in the running for number one team in terms of defensive rating. Uh, they'll be year. up there for sure. For this year, pardon me. First free throw, no good. Second one will fall for Crane, the senior. And that will do it for quarter number one. Well, if you're Stanford, that went about as well as you could hope for. They shoot 60% from the field, only allow 8% from the Aztecs. Just two turnovers. And then, oh, by the way, they're up 25 to 4 after one. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, Tim Swartz will have the play by play here from Maples. Every single, almost every women's and men's basketball team playing, everybody in the NBA playing. So they got to make this like a national holiday, this a day before Election Day. And, of course, too, you, speaking of men's basketball, even after the win, they got a pretty big win, too, as Andre Stojakovic committing to the Cardinal, the four-star recruit, of course, son of former NBA sharpshooter Paige Stojakovic. Well, first basket on the first possession for Pepe, the uh, Low Long Beach native. 25-7, and an offensive foul. So San Diego State, first 31 seconds, a lot better than the first quarter. You can hear the offense called for the foul. That's her second. Yeah, she just tried to force her way inside to get that position, and Saitara's going to talk to her for a quick second now as Ashton Prechtel's coming in for her. Ashton Prechtel. 97th career game at Stanford. 6-5, will play kind of the five, but she can really shoot it. Elena Boscano's in as well. This is the earliest that she has come into a game in her Stanford career. Soph sophomore from Athens Greek, really skilled lefty. Came in, was really productive against Vanguard. 11 points on five of seven shooting. There's Yummy Morris for two. The best name in the NCAA. Also one of the cooler 
majors and goals with that as well. Finished with TCU, had fashion merchandising, and says she wants to start a clothing label that represents the taller community. Obviously, I can relate to that. Emma Nopu just couldn't get it to go. Jump ball there. What, now, what are you, 6'4", six, 6'5"? Six, don't, don't shortchange me, 6'5". Six, six, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. You can shortchange me in weight, not height. That, same, that's the rule. Absolutely, same here. I'm, I don't know, 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, so we, we, maybe after the game we'll ask Yummy if she's got some prototypes. Yeah, there we go. We'll be, we'll be models. I always wanted to be a model. And don't give up on that dream is <laughs> Haley Jones. A little rip through move and was hit on the arm as she went up. So two more free throws for Haley who last year was led Stanford just about 83% in the line and she will uh, really get to the line a lot. Two for two already. That was the smaller crane who got her, her first personal. Yeah, this is the one area, not for Haley, as you mentioned, about 83%, but as a team, you know they would love to improve from last year. Shot just under 69% from the line, which put them right around, it put them 11th in the Pac-12, and if you want to see where that is nationally, you'd go down into the 230s in that regard. Staples, Minnesota transfer, checks back in for Stacy Terry Hudson, 10th year in charge. Associate head coach Jason Glover, who was at USC under Mark Track staff for a while. Very friendly with the Stanford staff before the game. Staples, a senior up the right wing, Rayel Bo Pepe. Off balance shot uh, is not a quality shot. That's what Stanford forces you into. 20% shooting for San Diego State. Brink, spin move, and she was fouled as she went up. And Tim, you, you made a really good point on that other end, too. You can just sense it that. San Diego State, they're trying to get these shots off as fast as possible because they know eventually that length and size of Stanford is going to get there. So even before they can even contest the shot, the length is still affecting them. Because you want to shoot early in the shot clock. The deeper in the shot clock that you get, the higher of a chance that you're taking a bad shot. First free throw in and out for Cameron Brink, who 61% uh, at the free throw line, but that percentage went up as the year went on last season. Second one is in. Cam, top five recruit in the nation when she came here to Stanford. 91 blocks last year. That was Stanford record. It's always impressive when you're on campus and the record that you break is the own record that you set the year before. You got two more chances to, exactly, to break it. Exactly, right. Just three if she wanted to come, by, come back for that fifth year because that – her freshman year was the COVID year that didn't count. Bank shot, banks in, Ramos. Yeah, well, the bank might be closed, but the ATM's always open. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe San Diego State is, uh, in, yeah, 8-3, they're winning this second quarter. The intensity we saw in that first quarter, not as high for Stanford. Here's Mascana. Very good shooter. There it is. She's played with the full Greek national team. Played a 2021 Euro basket with the full Greek national team. And she's got a Greek teammate now. Yeah. Stavi Papadak Papadaki, pardon me, the freshman. 31-12 Cardinal. Agnes. Great bank shot. No good. Emma Nopu fighting for it. And will she get an assist? No. A loose ball foul is called against Cameron Brink. Yeah, I think those fouls with Cameron Brink, you'll be okay with, right? She's being aggressive on the boards. Because I think the thing overall, she, she's coming out now, and I, I talked to Tara about this last week too. It's been so impressive. You talk about the block shots. Well, what's so remarkable, remarkable about, especially her freshman year, think about the foul trouble she would get into not only trying to contest everything, but how she would contest it, then obviously the fouls went down a lot last year. So you only kind of wonder, well, what could that record have been like really her freshman year if she didn't have so many games with foul trouble? Six or nine points leading Stanford and everybody. Six rebounds for Cameron Brink. 19-point lead for the Cardinal. Here's Ashton Prechtel. Pascana. The lefty tries to go up. Pepe ripped it out of her arms. 
you saw Navarra, she checks in now. You saw her get a foul called on the other end for doing something pretty similar there, but a good job by Peppa using her hands and, and getting all ball, I guess. Hannah jump back in. Talk about the evolution of Hannah. Four points as a freshman, six and a half as a sophomore, and then nine last year as a junior. You set up that double elevator screen up top. Haley played AAU ball with Hannah. Two on the timer. Navarre off balance, three, rims out. Cracked on offensive rebound, tried to feed Dimitri, just couldn't get it to her. 19 point lead for the Cardinal. They've led us by as many as 22. At one point this game was 25-3. San Diego State 15 and 16 last year in the Mountain West, lost in the second round of the Mountain West tournament, a heartbreaker to New Mexico. That's another just wild shot from Pepe, who is one for four. San Diego State uh, as a team is 20%. Jones couldn't get it to go. And a loose ball foul on Brooke Dimitri. It's been a few times now I've seen this, but the agility of a 6'1 point guard that Haley Jones has, you see how, how able she is to go behind the back, stop on a dime and create that separation for herself. It's so incredible. 5.26 remaining in the opening half of play. Tim Swartz, Jordan Watkins with you. Busy week for Stanford. They will play CSUN, a late add on Wednesday. Friday, they'll go to Stockton to face off with UOP. And then uh, Sunday will be the first flight of the year up to Portland to face the Pilots. We'll have the game on Wednesday streamed here. It was a late add. That game was not added until about two weeks ago. I'll tell you what, thank goodness it was. It gives me another chance to be on the call. I think that's why they added it. They, they, knew, they wanted to they know that you and Doc needed another, get a, little, get a call in together to, this year. You know what? That, that's what I'm going to tell myself, too. Ramos, bounce pass. Lefty three is an air ball. They'll let him play. Navarre tried to find Fran Belibi. First time in for the senior from Centennial, Colorado. Two Centennial, Colorado natives. Fran and Lauren Betts on this team. Stanford had not had a lot of players from Colorado. And Ash Dam three on this team. That's kind of been the trend lately, right? At first it was you didn't see many internet. We didn't have any international players on Stanford, and now you see a a lot more of the, the international influence. Remember that started with Alana Smith when she came here. You used to not see any grad transfers. We saw that with Jordan Hamilton last year. And now you're talking about the Colorado players. Well, and like you mentioned, got a good bit, good good, uh, good amount from, from that state. Hannah Jump called for the foul. And uh, San Diego State for the final 427 in the bonus. Cardinal up 31-12. Eight is shooting, and, and make no mistake about it, it's not that San Diego State's a bad shooting team, but this defense from Stanford has forced them into four of 21 shooting so far. And then also when you look at it, I think the other thing too is when you look at the, when you look at the rebounding, it's 19 to nine. And obviously with that, of course, if you, have, if you force a team in a lot of misses, you're gonna have a chance for a lot of defensive rebounds, but they're also, Right now, plus two on the offensive boards as well. We talked about that size advantage that Stanford will have tonight, and they'll probably have, if we're being honest. Most nights they step on the court, and already they're showing it and using it to their advantage. A couple finals already in the Pac-12. Cal beat CSUN 86-56. CSUN will be here on Wednesday. Cal was uh, picked 11th in the Pac-12. Utah, who uh, went to the NCAA tournament last year, played Stanford in the... Pac-12 tournament final, defeated Idaho 88-63. Allison Pilly, who is a, a, a transfer from USC at 27 mm. for the Utes. A lot of inter-conference transfers as this one's deflected out of play. Colorado beat New Mexico State 85-55. Quay Miller had 22 in that victory for Colorado. She was, uh, started her career at Washington. Colorado is supposed to be very strong this year, uh, a team that hopes to make the NCAA tournament. Tell you what, that's always a tough road trip for Stanford, and it's going to be even tougher this year. Colorado's going to be really good, and I tell you what, 
It's a lot of fun watching that Utah team play. Lynn Roberts definitely has that program in the right direction. Another three from Dimitri. It is raining threes for Stanford, second for Brooke, and uh, the Cardinal already with seven. That's seven of 13. That'll work. I, mean, I wasn't a math major, but that's over 50%, right? That much I do know, yes. Foul's gonna go against Dimitri. Second on Brooke. That's the one thing that Stanford has struggled with tonight. Nine fouls already, five in this quarter. This will be free throws number five and six. And of course, that's one of the things that I think with Brooke, obviously in line to get a lot more playing time than last year. She's gonna have to learn, you know, stay vertical. And another six, two, six, three wing for Stanford. You don't have to come down on some of those shots. You'll still be able to get the block. If you stay vertical, obviously, worst case scenario, a scenario, you'll affect the shot. But again, it comes with more playing time. For Haskin makes both. He is a uh, transfer from Notre Dame. Started 16 games. Stanford had their third grad transfer to Notre Dame over the last couple years as Haley Jones misses the three. Jenna Brown graduated. And Wish the best for Jenna. She's at Notre Dame now. Right. Turnover by the Aztecs. Fifth turnover by San Diego State. Just the first of this quarter. Well, Stanford won the first quarter 25-4. San Diego State's winning the second quarter 10-9. Yeah, I think after a while, if you're San Diego State, and even understandably so, probably a little bit excited. Again, it's their first game. They didn't even have an exhibition game. You're coming here playing the number two team in the country. Now I think they've settled down into it a little bit. That's interesting. You're allowed to have two exhibition slash scrimmages. Lefty shot is short for Crane. Stanford played one scrimmage against US, US, uh, USF that was behind closed doors. Molly Goodenbauer, the former Stanford star. And then they played the dress rehearsal that we saw against Vanguard. Haley Jones does not think that was a travel to you. I didn't think it was a travel or an offensive foul, whatever they called it, either way. The officiating crew for tonight. That was Anita Ortega who made that call. Sam Gibson, Kimberly Hobbs. Yummy, over to Crane. Crane and Yummy were adopted sisters and then went to TCU together. There's the turnover. Jump, catch and fire. And it's kept in on the far sidelines. That's played by Staples. Sadie Staples, fifth year senior. Good Great. hands. The long two goes down. The lost start of the mid range jumper from Alex Crane. Again, with this, the length and the defensive ability for Stanford, even if it's a long two, you better get that shot up, that open look up while you can. 34-16, Stanford leads by 18. LaPolo was fouled. Crane's called for her second personal. A yeah, little bit of a reach in. Nice. Navarre knocks down another three. Second three for the talented freshman from North Carolina. Number 20 recruit in the nation. You see the growth too of Hannah Jump. I don't know when she comes when she came into Stanford if she makes that play rip drive baseline and then the cross court pass to find Navarre in the opposite corner. Lapolo deed up by Crane. Crane, one of the most impressive student athlete resumes I have ever seen. I'm not exaggerating. Apollo, three straight away is just off. But the point Alex Crane here, she graduated from TCU in two years mm -hmm. and uh, has already earned, earned, earned her business in uh, Masters of Business Administration, MBA for short, from San Diego State, which is a great school. Navarre, all the way down. Nice. Use the body, go off the wrong foot, throw off the timing of the defender, put it up and in. That's so skilled. 
and she is just explosive, India Navarre. And you see that usually you go with that right hand, you jump off the left foot. But of course, as a defender, that's what they expect you to do too. Right there, India, what she did, she goes off the right foot, off that first step. It's hard to contest that. Block. <laughs> but Cameron Brink can contest everything. You might want to try somebody other than number 22. I mean, all these blocks have been swats. She's just, she's just locked in on it. She went she went easy on the cameraman. The cameraman's <laughs> down there, and she kind of just tipped that about. She could have broken a lens. Ethan back in the control room, very happy that Cameron was nice to us. It's just a game. No need for broken lenses. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelo did not know how much time was on the clock. Well, that was a point you were making earlier, Jordan, that San Diego State trying to shoot early in the clock. That's why. Here we go. Five seconds. Lapolo. Asking for the dribble drive. Goes herself, swings it. Pascano beats the clock! How perfect was that? The drive, you attract the extra to help side defender, kick it to the corner. Let's see, look at this catch too by Boscana. Had to go down a little bit for it. And look at it, just leave it. All great shooters. You leave that form up there. Money. A lot of lefties make it look so good. And it's uh, game one, but already, that might already be the smile of the year from Ella. She had a huge smile on her face. Great to see her do well. Great to see Stanford play excellent basketball offensively. 48% from the field, 8 for 18 from deep. The Cardinal led by 9 and 6 from Cameron Brink. By the way, four blocks as well. Uh, it is uh, three assists for Haley Jones, three assists for Lapolo. And the Cardinal rolling at the half. 42-16. Yeah, for Lapolo, didn't record any points, but three assists. Can we remark about her ability to really push that ball up the court? And then India Navarre, three of six from the floor, eight points total, two of four from the three-point line. Yeah, plus 19 in nine minutes. It's not the best plus minus. It's plus 28 for Hannah Jump, but that's kind of like the bus ratio of plus minus to minutes. Again, we weren't math majors. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other side for San Diego State, if you are a big plus minus person, they only have one player that is in the positives as Haley Jones missed that, got her own rebound, and got tied up for the jump ball. The only player not in the negative for the Aztecs was Megan Fizeau, and she played two minutes and 42 seconds, and she's a plus two. Next closest player is a minus eight. 18 on the shot clock for Stanford. Haley Jones in the area off and one dribble using that shoulder. Nothing there, so she'd take it back out. Shot clock now at 10. Back to area off and here's the, the face up and draws a foul. I'd say the one thing I think if you're saying you could say you, you'd be really happy with is they had an 8 3 run to start the second quarter. They, they lost the first quarter 25 4. And you're thinking, uh oh, this one could get ugly, but. Uh, San Diego State kind of weathered the storm, and they only lost the second quarter 17-12, so give them credit for responding to the initial Stanford push because when Stanford gets going here at Maples and the fans are in, it is very tough to get out of those holes. Kiki at the line, hits the first, her first trip to the line in this game. And if you look at it by quarter, Stanford in the first 60% from the floor, 9 of 15. They were 5 of 14, just 35% in the second. Meanwhile... San Diego State, one of 13, and well, we don't have to be math majors for this because they put it on the paper for us. 7.7%, <laughs> but four of 13, though, in that second quarter. 44-16 now in favor of the Cardinal. The drive, and again, the denial. Cameron Brink coming over on help side. Jones to Erie Offen. Good footwork, up with the left hand for two. She is just so, so efficient. Eight points in seven minutes. Eight points on three shots. That'll work. Oh. Nice over the hill move. No good. A good drive, though, from Villalobos. Again, it, they haven't had a lot of open opportunities in the paint, have the Aztecs. Brink, Thierry off in for two. And once again, a quick timeout from Stacy Terry Hudson. And so far, this third quarter has belonged to Kiki Erie often. 
Six points for Kiki, six points for Stanford, a 6-0 quick spurt. Remember, the Cardinals started this game out, I think it was a 9-0 run to start the game. 8.22 left to go here in the third. With the timeout on the court, we'll take one with you. Cardinal in front, 48-16. Six consecutive points. Kinky Erie often six consecutive points to start off this third quarter. And, of course, as we mentioned and talked about before, here is that full court pressure. And it's Agnes Emanopu hounding Sophia Ramos all the way up the floor. Yeah, I think she'll take that Anna Wilson spot. Just the aggressive defender. And, of course, you don't want to go up in there when Cameron brings around. Now, <laughs> even on the pass. You saw for a second, Prohaska, she said, I don't want to take it. And finally, they get one up and over. Cameron Brink for an and one. It's Kim Villalobos. Haley's called for a second. Yeah, I mean, that's just like you got Cameron Brink in your face. You got Haley Jones jumping at you. But credit to Villalobos. That's what you got to do against shop blockers. Go up without fear. I guess one thing that does help if you, if you are going to try to go up around Cameron Brink, make her spin around a little bit or a couple of passes in the paint, you see a little harder to defend. And of course, this is one thing I'm sure Stanford, Katara Vanderveer, to an extent you love to see, they're going up against this full court pressure. And Stanford just able to beat it. Almost had a turnover here on this sideline close to us, another deflected pass. Things a little helter skelter right now. 10 seconds left. Brink and she is fouled. I believe that's gonna be called on Mercedes Staples and it is. Yeah, she got her. They're fighting for positioning. Yeah, she grabbed her. <laughs> I don't know if anybody takes more hits than Cameron Brink underneath the basket, and she just gets a lot of knocks. There's only one player I would have thought of in the past that'd be in contention for it uh, as a blocking foul. Will be called on Prohaska as Emanopu was going through the lane. But yeah, there's only one other player I think that might be in contention for it. Of course, now she's on with the Indiana Fever, and that's Lexi Hull. All the amount of times we saw her on the floor in her four years at Stanford. So that was the help side defender from Prohaska, so that's why it was called a foul. You get there in time, but you can't be a secondary defender. And Brock, use that, get that charge. Great pass by Brink. Emanopo a little too strong and then will commit the foul about 90 feet away from the basket. Second on Ag Agnes. Now, as the season went on last year, she started playing more. She had a big three against Oregon late in the game and she ended up playing 12 of the last 14 games. And if I'm not mistaken, that three in the Oregon game brought that back to within one. And Navarre will come in to replace her. Of course, you see Stanford, that ability to switch all over the floor defensively. And the layup no good. Again, they got around Brink. Great discipline, though. Cameron could have gone for the block, might have committed a foul, laid off. Really smart. And she's rewarded with the intelligence on defense with a wide open layup on offense. 11-8 and 3, put in the stat sheet says four blocks. I have her down as five, but again, yeah, she's got five. Stanford now the half century mark. The pull up jumper, that's a thing of beauty from Staples. Don't you love those mid range? I think that's something that you see a lot of teams and a lot of basketball players, both men and women, they're getting back to that now. Speaking of, there's Indian Navarre, but that's no good. Erie off in the rebound. And we'll have a foul, that one called on Yummy Morris. But when you look around basketball, of course for a while it really was the either it's in the paint or outside the arc kind of approach, but I think now you see that return to it. Now whether it's on the professional level when you have some pro players in the NBA, whether it's like DeMar DeRozan who's so good at it, the WNBA, you see so many players that have been so good at it for so long. Obviously, for example, Sue Bird, who just retired. And, of course, on the collegiate level, I mean, even Haley Jones, when she first came to Stanford, she was so good at some of those pull-up jumpers in the mid-range. Good anticipation by Ramos. A good hustle by Iriafin to get back. Slows it down. Got the foul. I've seen a lot more today of those hand-check fouls called. 
the referees. Maybe we can ask him. Just sometimes it's just points of emphasis. And I think maybe that hand check. We saw it the first possession of the game, I think. It's one of those big things, a freedom of movement for an offensive player. As you mentioned, Tim, a really big point of emphasis. Cameron Brink on the deflection. Here comes Lapolo the other way. Stanford has the numbers. Brink beats everybody down the floor and puts it up with the left hand. And Navarre so close to getting a steal. Instead, I think she's going to get called for the foul. Yeah, you look at that. The eyes of Lapolo were looking at jump the entire time and whip the pass to Brink. How fun is that 6'5 plus can be the first person down the floor? How fun would it be to play with Lapolo too? She's oh, just not goodness. looking. She's looking to get everybody else involved. Well, that's another. That's a good point because that's the other part of it, right? If you have someone like Lapolo out there, it makes you want to run the floor. Lapolo's taking one shot. It was a three towards the end of the shot clock. That she has four or five assists already. Brink gets another. That's number six today. Now, of course, not saying that she's always going to have six plus blocks a game, but but things would suggest that the single season blocks record once again might be in danger this year by Cameron Brink. And they'll have a foul on Hannah Jump. It will be a block, a push down on the block. I gotta, I'm, I'm looking it up right now in terms of single game block. Stanford yeah. set the school record. They had 13 blocks in that showdown at South Carolina in single game blocks. We're going to have to get our record books out. To the free throw line is Kylie Jade Peppa, sophomore from Long Beach. It's now 185 career blocks for Cameron Brink and 200. Bird, Erica McCall, fifth all time. One of the greatest personalities in Stanford women's basketball history. That went out of bounds, and it was last off Stanford. I tell you what, even though it's not a, continu a continuation in terms of offensive rebound to him, I think San Diego State, they'll be happy that any form or facet if a ball goes off the rim on their side of the floor and they still end up getting it. 14 on the shot clock. All in the corner. Now back out. Brink on the chase and a good drive with the left hand, Megan Fizeau. All right, Cameron Brink, six blocks today. That is sixth all time. Cameron Brink has done it three other times, four <laughs> other times. In the national semifinal against South Carolina, regional final against Texas last year. The, the record is Kristen Newland had eight at Washington State back in 04. Atlanta Smith. She had seven at Arizona. Erica McCall, Jocelyn Tinkle twice also with seven. There's a good chance that might fall today. This we'll see if Cameron Brink gets many more chances. Again, after a while, you think that some of those inside drives, it wouldn't surprise me if we see some drive. Welcome back inside. Maples where we will pick up the action with the 20th rated player, 20th ranked player in the country. That according to ESPN Hoop Girls, India Navarre at the line. So again, going back to her senior year at Apex Friendship High School, averaged 18 points a game, eight and a half rebounds, 3.8 assists, and also three and a half steals. So again, you talked about that on ball pressure and now there are multiple bodies for Stanford this year that can pick up full court and of course she put that on display she put it on tape as we like to say last year in her senior year yeah she is just a really explosive player and kind of your classic old school two guard she'll pick them up full court it's an interesting lineup too with Lapolo and Jones on the floor yeah, the basically a two-point guard look. Now here's Lapolo on ball. Great defense on Prohaska. Now Haley Jones with it. Excuse me, on defense, rather. They go back outside. Three-pointer on the way and good. One of the better looks of the night for the Aztecs. And Alex Crane knocks it down. 
Just shot a bit over 18% a year ago, and India Navarre says, I'll see your three and raise you another one. Third for India already. And there's no hesitation with it either. Now the outside shots are starting to come in bunches. That one no good, a little long from Barcelo. Here's Boscana, thought about it for a second. And Lapola will slow things down. Now Haley, nice pass, good backdoor cut, Boscana. We've seen that a lot the last few years in the Stanford offense. The backdoor cut, so lethal. Eight points in five minutes for Ellen off the bench. She is super skilled. Of course, it helps when you got Haley Jones dropping dimes. Well, that's the other part of it, too, right? Of course, if you're going to make those backdoor cuts, it always helps to have a good facilitator to get it to you and a good move on the block from Fizo, the junior from Seattle, Michigan transfer. Boscana for three. No, look at Navarre. Sky for the rebound. In between three Aztecs and gets it back outside. Now Lapolo, oh. good. No look pass over to Iriofen who puts it in for two. Kiki, five for five shooting in this game, 12 points. What was that we were saying again about how much fun it's going to be to watch Talana Lapolo run the point? Six assists in 13 minutes. Very much so the, the old-fashioned point guard, if you will. So far, she's played over over 12 minutes. And again, like you mentioned, just that one shot attempt. Here to see Janaya Harriel into the game. Her first regular season action, took a red shirt last year. And uh, Janaya, number 78 recruit last year. She's kind of like India Navarre in terms of a two-guard, good shooter, Springy, good defensive player as well. And she took two shots in the exhibition against Vanguard. Both were threes and both went in. That's always good oh. when they all go in. Always good when you look back up, you see you're shooting 100%. That might have been an announcer's jinx. Erie often. No, they wave it off, the offensive foul. Yeah. I don't know if we'll get another look. I think that Kiki kind of lowered that shoulder. That's her fourth foul. And even if you're in the restricted area, if the offensive player lowers your shoulder into you, it is a foul. That's going to be the next step for her. Obviously, you love the aggression and the physicality that Erie often brings as there's a three-pointer straight on by Mercedes Staples. But now it's just learning, first off, how strong exactly you are and then knowing how and when to use that physicality just like that. What a third quarter for Kiki, four for four for 10 points. 63-32 now in favor of Stanford. A lot of dribble handoffs, that's a tough pass and Lapolo's gonna come away with the steal. Here she comes in transition up to Erie Offen. Thought about it for a second and she'll take it up herself. I think she was surprised at first at exactly how open she was. Let's update you seven for seven shooting. <laughs> Is that good? Oh my goodness. Another three on the way for the Aztecs. No good, that one coming from Fizo. San Diego State a year ago shot 34% from three. All right, about the middle of the pack, fifth in the Midwest, excuse me, Mountain West. Very often, faces up from the elbow. Goes to that left hand again and no good. Ball is loose. Fizo got on the floor, and it'll go to the Aztecs with about a minute to go in the third. Good take from Crane. Might as well. The, the size for Stanford wasn't inside the paint. Doesn't happen often, so might as well take advantage. And look at Lapolo going right back. You see the ball fake there to get the defense off, off guard there? First career basket of many for Talana Lapolo. Well, she helps everyone else get a bucket. Might as well get one herself. Long two. Might have been a two for one, but no good. Here comes Boscana. No one stops ball, so she'll take it all the way with the right hand. 
Well, there's that old saying, right? If no one stops the ball, you might as well keep going to the basket. Yeah, Biscana, she didn't get to play a ton last year, and I think she kind of took that to heart. It's just kind of one of the things that you'll see. The freshmen that don't play a bunch, they have a great offseason, they come back, and now they're playing a lot. Good defense from Janaya. Two seconds left. Lopolo up to Janaya. Can she get it off in time? No. And that will do it for quarter number three. The quarter of Kiki Iriafin, if you will. She was absolutely phenomenal here in that third. As we have one more frame left to play from the season opener in Maple Stanford in front, 69-34. Final frame, as uh, Mr. Watkins said, as we come here for all you bowling fans. Stanford and San Diego State season opener for both teams. Next up for Stanford is Wednesday in CSUN. San Diego State will be at home for a couple of games against non-Division I teams. Nice catch and fire from Yummy Morris. I like that. You have a little bit of space. Reverse pivot into the mid-range jumper. The good news for San Diego State is they played much better in the middle two quarters after they lost the first 25-4. Bascagna misses a three. Lopolo, lefty dribble, swings it to Dimitri, drives in, cross-court pass. Lopolo, open three, in and out. Morris, an emphatic rebound. Tell you what's so exciting though, that possession. Look at the youth that's on the floor right now for Stanford and see how that ball just moved around it. I think it switched sides of the court at least three times. All freshmen and sophomores. Harriel down to Lauren Betts and mm. just couldn't get it to go. Six seven. Number one recruit in the nation. I mean, I tell you what, you can just see even on that move, I know she missed it, but you can see the footwork already as a freshman, how impressive it is. That was one thing that really stood out to me when I watched her play in the exhibition. And there were a couple of quotes from some other Colorado high school coaches about how she really developed a mid-range game too as well. The more she went on in her high school career. And of course, when you think about Stanford, a lot of their offensive sets with that horns look, how important that really could be as opposed to have that mid-range jumper. Lapolo surveying. Pascana for three. Pascana, 13 points in 11 minutes. Instant offense off the Cardinal bench, and there's Lapolo's ninth assist. Uh, Coach Vanderbilt was telling me that and that scrimmage against USF. Here's Lauren Betts. Oh, my goodness. And oh there's the goodness. first bucket in the Stanford career of Lauren Betts. You always reward the big for running the floor. Good pass. And Lauren Betts, are you kidding me, 6'7", beating everyone down the floor like that? And that, that scrimmage, Stanford uh, inner scrimmage that they had open to the public, Tara Vandiver said the polo had 10 assists and one turnover. Mm. She's got nine in her regular season opener. Betts with the rebound. Pascana. Time out San Diego State. Another rapid start to a quarter for Stanford. Tim, is this the fastest team that you've seen in, in, at Stanford? I, I mean, I'm thinking for me, obviously I haven't been around the program as long as you have, but I don't know if I've seen one that from top to bottom of the roster can get up and down the floor the way this team can. I think the thing I love the most, too, with those 22 assists, only eight turnovers. And we've seen a lot of different ball handlers, some newer ball handlers as well tonight, so very impressive. Lapolo with nine assists and uh, no turnovers. And there's always those, those, those rec record books where they got the freshman records and the debut records. And I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say nine assists is probably a freshman record for a debut for Lapola. And something tells me, in the words of Marcus Peters, he once said in a pre press conference, she ain't done yet. <laughs> there's 7.15 left, and the end of that Vanguard game turned into a layup line. Yes. Now, San Diego State is a lot better than Vanguard. Vanguard's an NAIA school, but uh, 
you saw as that game went on, Vanguard really kind of wore down, and Stanford, they have, uh, they were really playing, while well, this game was still uh, competitive, 12 different players. Fran Belibi back in for the Cardinal. The last time we saw her here at Maple, she had the dunk against Montana State. It was a pretty cool article that she was in a little while ago just talking about that evolution of the women's game, if you will, is that mid-range jumper no good for Morris. Now you've seen eight different women dunk in a game and just how you're going to see more and more of it as the athletes continue to get bigger and stronger. Because I think sometimes people forget as we talk about the, the height on this team, and usually when you think about dunkers in the past, you know, Brittany Griner obviously was 6'7". Candace Parker, 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 Fran is about 6'1". But, of course, long arms, great jumping ability. And when you think about that, it just makes it even more impressive what she's able to do. One of the cool NIL things is she had the Fran slam mm -hmm. at Denny's. I wish I would have kept to try it. No Denny's around me. And the reverse lane is good for Villa Lobos. Yeah, I can't think of one for me either. And of course, I'm, I'm being from Georgia, I'm a little biased. So what I usually do for my breakfast stuff what, is. What do people like from Georgia? Oh, that breakfast place? What's it called? Uh, that wonderful place in the world known as Waffle House. You know, you can actually go on their website and buy. Hypothetically, like their of course, you've never done this. Oh, no, I've done it. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, you can buy, like, their waffle mix, their hash browns, all these kind of things. 76-38 Stanford. Cardinals doubling up the Aztecs of San Diego State. Wednesday, a 6 o'clock start. CSUN is here. Jordan Watkins, more Waffle House talk. Along oh, with yeah. Dr. Joaquin Wallace, the former head coach of San Francisco State, our good friend. Fran Balibi. Well, the smile tells you I don't think she called bank. I don't either, but I tell you what, again, we talked about Lauren Betts in the mid-range game. This is the next step for Fran. I mean, even just the fact that she f feels confident enough to take that shot. Mentioned this is a crazy week for Stanford. It's game day off, game day off, game day off, all the way through Sunday. And then next week, uh, you probably want to make a little bit of space on your Sunday oh, afternoon. Oh, yes. Number one, South Carolina on ABC. They'll have the, 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 the broadcast booth for you. Uh, that'll be on next Sunday, the 20th. And I was told the tickets are going fast. So if you do want tickets, go Stanford.com. I was told the lower bowl is pretty much sold out. There's an NBA continuation for Phil Lobos. We also just talk about how awesome it is in an early regular season women's college game is going to be on ABC. Stanford has two games on ABC. They've got that one. And then they have a Sunday afternoon matchup with Tennessee. I mean, people have been saying it for years, right, in terms of the interest and the demand is there. Just put, give them the platform. Give them the platform. I mean, all the numbers that you look at from the, the Women's March Madness tournaments from years past. Of course, last year the numbers were incredible. You saw the turnout in Minneapolis. Of course, that, that was helpful that Paige Beckers, she got a big home draw from there too. But – the demand and interest has been there for a while, and finally the producers and the stations, they're listening, and, and you're getting those products on these big-time networks. It's long overdue. And some second-round NCAA tournament games on ABC. Tech ball. Be interesting, too, the NCAA tournament is far away. This is opening night, but there will be just two regionals. There will be the 16, top 16 teams get to host first and second rounds. And then there'll be just two regionals, one in Greenville, South Carolina, and one in Seattle, Washington. A, a big tweak to the women's basketball postseason format. They'll keep the format of Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday off, and then Sunday afternoon for the Pac-12 tournament as well, if you are thinking about going out to Las Vegas. Always a fun time in Vegas. Talking about for the tournament, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, I broadcast the tournament. I did nothing else. In Las Vegas. What else is there to do there? Nothing. I mean, I guess just play golf if you want <laughs> to. I mean. Papadaki is in. There's wow. another NBA continuation. And, yeah, I like the FISO celebration. Give him the N one. But uh, into the game, first regular season action for Stavi Papadaki uh, from the Crete Island of Greece. 5'11 freshman. Played at the uh, 
U18 Euros with the Greek youth national team. I've yeah, been with the, the Greek national team ever since the, the U14 level. That's the one thing that's been really cool, too, about a lot of these Stanford teams, especially as of late. You see all the national team experience that they have, and, of course, one of the things that's really cool with that, sometimes you play with your teammates before they're your collegiate teammates. Papadaki, very skilled player. Kind of play that one or the two. Lauren Betts asking for the ball. Getting fronted by Pepe. Asking, she's asking to throw up that lob. Harriel, step back, long three is short. Aztecs have their starters in, so it's the starters of the uh, San Diego State team against kind of the, 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 the second, third unit of Stanford. Great minutes for these freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, you talked about it. This is a San Diego State team, make no mistake about it. They're gonna be a solid team this year. Again, even last season, in that Mountain West tournament, took the number two seed in that tournament down to the wire, lost by three to New Mexico after the first round win against Boise State. And you have a, again, you have a lot of experience on this team. Some of those players that have been to the NCAA tournament before. I mean, Abby Prohaska, when she was a freshman at Notre Dame, played in that final four run. Sarah Barcelo at Maris, MAAC all championship team member. There's a lot of talent on the San Diego State team. It'll be interesting to see how they do once conference play starts for them. Nice little 8-0 spurt for the Aztecs. Stanford led by 40. Now it's down to 32. Lauren Green has come off the bench. The walk-on. Stanford has not had a walk-on for several years. He's a walk-on from Castro Valley, East Bay. Side out. 3-0-4 remaining in the game. Buscana. This is a career high, 15. Their previous career high was five. They called the foul on the floor. I like the local flair too that Stanford has. You look at all the Bay Area players. Of course, Lauren Green from Castro Valley. Lapolo from Alameda, of course. Hannah Jump from San Jose. Santa Cruz is represented as well with Haley Jones. How about the A area represented? I mean, this, this, the Bay Area, especially when it comes not just to basketball, but women's basketball for a long time has really been a hotbed of talent. That one rattles in for Staples. Lauren Green, her parents, Angela and Richard, both attended Stanford and has an older brother, De Devin, who also goes to Stanford. Yeah, her father, he was a JV basketball player here at Stanford. And again, back on that women's basketball hotbed note, I've started the campaign before, I'm going to continue it. What do we have to do to get the women's final, final four. four Chase Center? I'm in. What do we need to do to make it happen? Well, you work there, you can talk to some people. That's a good point. The owner at Chase Center has been here for many women's basketball yeah. games. Joe Lakeup, who uh, owns the Warriors and is a big supporter of Stanford men's and women's basketball. Yeah, he was uh, he was here earlier for the men's game. I'm sure he's up at Chase Center right now trying to figure out who needs a stern talking to to get the Warriors turned around. Right now I know they're playing the Kings. Kevin Dan is doing the radio broadcast tonight with Jeanette pulling across the way. Don't say the score too loud. <laughs> he, he's the last guy in the world that tries to watch stuff on tape delay. Long three off, Betts offensive rebound. Papadaki drives in, Ooh. nice dish. Harriel for three, buckets. <laughs> well, there are minutes available. Stanford graduated about 90 minutes a game. And lots of players are going to be fighting for those minutes, including Janaya. The best part about it, too, is the thing is with a lot of those players who are fighting for the minutes, they all bring something different to the table. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that they're specialists because they're all very versatile, but they have certain things, areas of expertise in particular that they can. I mean, look at Janaya Harriel with that defense. 
So Hannah Jump, the undisputed shooting champion of the Stanford team, but I don't know, it's early. And two of the players on the floor, well actually uh, Elena just came off, but Biscana and Harriel are kind of making their case for the number two shooter. Yeah, so if you heard that crowd noise right there, so Natalia Grizzle, a freshman, she's from Sunnyvale, California, so a, a product of St. Francis High School. So I'm sure that she has a lot of family and friends in attendance. Actually was born here at Stanford. St. Francis Lancer. Sister Mia plays for St. Mary's over in Moraga. And her favorite athlete, if you grew up in the Bay you played basketball, it is? Stephen Curry. There you go. Lauren Betts and one. I just love the emotion and the energy after it, too. I love it. The great seal. You don't think she's fired up? You love to see that from the number one recruit in the country who, hey, it's a 40, about a 40-point game late, and she is playing like if it's a tie game and this place is packed and it's the number one team in the country. I tell you what, it's not that hard to find 6-7 on the block. Nice catch radius. Oh, yeah. Shot clock's off. Let's see Grizzle shoot it. Oh, she has to. The St. Francis <laughs> Lancers that are above us on their St. Francis Brown are screaming at her to do it. That'll do it. 86-48, Stanford starts out this season with very high expectations on the right foot. The right foot, the left foot, all the feet. I mean, that was phenomenal. And and they did it in all different facets. We talked about the versatility of so many different players on this team, Tim, and you saw it today. I mean, you shoot 51% from the field, 36%, almost 37 from three. And then the thing I like about it the most, look at the free throw line, 11 of 13. We talked about it. I think if there's any area of, of improvement that they'd really want to see from last year, that's where it would be. You come in and you shoot 84% here in game one. Win number 1158 for Tara Vanderveer, which uh, extends the uh, all-time women's NCAA record. And uh, she is going to be pretty soon kind of lurking at that record that Coach K has for all of Division I basketball. No, without a doubt. I mean, again, you, just, you think about it. Obviously, the great coach that she is, she continues to bring in all this great talent. It's going to be another big time year for Stanford. Obviously, 32 wins last year. Who knows how many they'll have this year. And, of course, their impressive play in one of the toughest conferences, not the toughest conferences in the country, being the Pac-12. Again, just game one, but definitely off to a great start. A Stanford victorious in this one. Some of your final game totals and numbers. Stanford over 50%, 32 for uh, 62, 52 percent from the field 11 threes knocked down that three-point percentage was a lot better in the first half 18 8 for 18 in the first half second half it cooled off just a little bit to 3 of 12 but 36 percent for the game will do and as jordan mentioned 11 of 13 for the free throw line they hold, holds uh, san diego state to 31 percent but a little misleading aztecs went six for 15 in the fourth quarter and uh, in that first half of play the aztecs were five of 29 San Diego State did not have anybody in double figures. Nine off the bench for Fiso and nine for Crane, who was in the starting lineup. Some of the impressive numbers for Stanford. Cameron Brink, 13 points, six blocks. Tied for six most ever in a Stanford game. Eight rebounds as well in under 20 minutes. Kiki Erie often, seven for eight, 16 points. Uh, Haley Jones, six points, four rebounds, and five assists in 22 minutes. Uh, cool as a cucumber as always, a plus 32, the best plus minus mm. in this game. Uh, Lapolo, 11 assists off the bench in 20 minutes. Again, it, it, it's just so much fun to watch. And we talked about how there's so many different players that can really push that pace and that tempo. But already as a freshman, and, and think about how, what I'm saying here, because obviously you have a returning All-American at point guard, starting point guard. She might be the best player on the team when it comes to pushing the ball and fast break. 
be very interesting to see uh, the development of Lapolo. Passing wise, the development's pretty much already there. Yes. India Navarre was a spark plug off the bench, plus 22 in 13 minutes. She had 13 points, five points for Lauren Betts, her first five points at Stanford for the number one recruit in the country. Brooke Dimitri looked very sharp, knocking down a couple of threes, eight points for her. Uh, Elena Bascagna with 15 points in 15 minutes, six rebounds, easily. You know, it's just her second season, but easily her best game at Stanford. A Harriel knocked down a three, Bolivia had two points, and then nice to see Lauren Green and Stavi Papadaki get on the board as well. Yeah, I think one thing's going to be interesting, Tim, so not even just in the conference, obviously there's so many other talented teams in the Pac-12, but even on this team, there could be a race or a competition for who's going to be sixth player of the year. I mean, we talked about India Navarre already. Elena Boscana, she's taking that next leap. And, of course, we already have a player who's won sixth player of the year still on the roster, too, with Ashton Frechtel. So that's going to be fun to see as the year goes on, too. Stanford, some of the pay points, 38-16 in the paint. And at bench points, 48-21. Well, we'll be back at it on Wednesday, 6 o'clock start. Make sure you tune in here on GoStanford.com. Jordan Watkins and Dr. Joaquin Wallace. Hopefully doctors watching at home, our good friend. It'll be fun to see him on Wednesday. If uh, you can't make it out, watch online. We hope to see you here at Maples Pavilion. Well, for our entire GoStanford.com crew, my name is Tim Swords. Once again, your final score, Stanford 86, San Diego State 48. We will see you on Wednesday.